the Ram Mandir. It's coming up again. The Supreme Court is now putting cases on a fast track. But beach me there is Ravi Shri Shri Ravi Shankar has come in. What do you make of all this? Well, he's not come in the middle. Uh, he's it's a parallel thing. Uh, the court cases will continue irrespective of what he does. But he could con contribute to a consent order. That is, the parties in the dispute uh, come together and say, yes, we are ready to accept this solution. If he's successful in that, it will be a huge contribution to Hindu-Muslim unity. And uh, he should succeed, in my opinion, because we have now got practically most of the Muslim population keen to have this as a settlement. There's a division between the Shias and the Sunnis. One is the division between the Shias and Sunnis. The women of uh, Muslim community, they all say... There is a gender division. Uh, gender division is also there. Then there are Khoras, Bojas, who say why we should get into it. Mm -hmm. Then amongst the Sunnis also, there is Wahhabi uh, flavor and non-Wahhabi flavor. Uh, but there is one stumbling block, which uh, I told Ravi Shankar when I spent about uh, five days in his ashram. Uh, recently, uh, that uh, the m moderate Muslims are terrified of the extremist elements. Hmm. And uh, they are in the Muslim community, unlike the Hindu community, uh, there is a much greater fear of being labeled as a, a person who has been paid for. So they think that if Sarkari we... Sarkari Muslim. Sarkari Muslim, or he's taken money, hmm. or he's surrendered, uh, he's betrayed the, the calm, that sort of thing. So uh, there he runs into a problem, because I have had talks. Hmm. Privately, they all know that they say to me, your solution is excellent, which is in my what opinion... What is the Dr. Subramanian Swami solution? See, I, first let me tell you the basis so that you ah. know and understand why the solution. <laughs> I have a fundamental right to worship where my faith says Lord Rama was born. There's no dispute on that. There was a temple there before. There's no dispute on that because the archaeological survey has given a Correct. unanimous report. And there's also a commitment of the Narsimha Rao government that if there was a pre-existing temple, we'll hand it over to the Hindus. Uh, now, as far as the masjid is concerned, I have verified from scholars all over the world, Islamic scholars from all over the world, they say it is a place where people, Muslims, gather for reading namaz and getting pravachans. Mm. But it is not a religious place. It is not a place which is immutable. Therefore, in Saudi Arabia, in uh, Qatar, in Turkey, uh, even Pakistan, they very often for constructive purposes like building a new building or uh, putting a road uh, especially in Turkey, they demolish a large number of masjids or give them an alternative site to build a masjid. Hmm. So, today, the, where the Babri Masjid once stood, there is no nearby Muslim population. The Muslim population is now mostly, particularly the Shia Muslims of, of whose uh, masjid it was, are on the borders of Ayodhya and the next district, which is called the Ambedkar hmm. district. So, the Shias are justifiably saying that there's no use building a masjid in the same area as the Ram temple because we have to go long distances for it. Hmm. It's better to build it there and we are ready for it. The Wahhabi Muslims, uh, Sunni Muslims, who really don't have, uh, they are really not, don't have a claim because it is not a uh, Sunni uh, masjid. But still they have been there because nobody challenged their position, now it's being challenged. They regard this as a Hindu-Muslim fight, although their prayer is based on property. Which now, even they if have you, no right, so. uh, and that is a lower right than a fundamental right. So the court, I I had argued this matter on the very first day. Hmm. I have a fundamental right. They have an ordinary property right. There is a clash over the same issue. Supreme Court in five judgments has said when fundamental right and ordinary right clash, fundamental right shall prevail. Okay. So I said there's no need to uh, proceed, just don't even have to hear them. If you are convinced I have a fundamental right, which I'll argue, then the matter ends there. But the court said we'll hear you last, because it would have been too much uh, upheaval <laughs> if they said we don't have to hear the Muslim parties at all. 
Uh, because they were a propaganda would have been quite severe. Yeah. So the solution is build a masjid, but elsewhere, mm -hmm. and let the Hindus build Ram Lala Temple. It's not just Ram Temple. It's, it's Ram Lala place. Temple. He was only born at one place. So there's no other place. There have been attempts in the past and you've been closely associated with both the governments. I'm talking about Narsimha Rao and Chandrasekhar. Yes. What happened during that time? Because Sharad Pawar is now coming up with some formula. Uh, Sharad Pawar is just... I mean, there's nothing in the, uh, in the uh, white paper which refers to this. He says this now. But for the record, what he's saying is that 60-40... I know, 40, I know, 60-40 uh, and you know, all. I, I, I have no idea. I'll tell you I was law minister, hmm. besides, of course, being commerce minister. Chandrasekhar told me first that uh, the Babri Masjid Action Committee chairman is Shabuddin, he's your dear friend. Why don't you two talk it out and come with a solution? So I talked to Shabuddin and I must say to his credit, even though he's perceived as a fanatic, this, that, etc. He told me, if you can prove that there was an existing temple, mm. I myself will go and demolish the Babri Masjid. And we couldn't prove it during the time Chandrasekhar was prime minister because the government fell. Soon after. But the subsequent government of Narsimha Rao accepted to have this matter examined because they gave an affidavit saying, if there was a pre-existing temple, then we will hand it over to the Hindu. So Supreme Court said, get this uh, looked at. They told uh, Allahabad High Court. So Allahabad High Court asked the Archaeological Survey of India. They appointed two people, Bibi Lal and K.K. Mohammed, both uh, well-known uh, archaeologists. And they did a thorough job. And they said, yes, there was a birthplace. Uh, there's, still, hmm. uh, there's still a temple under the, where the masjid stood, a temple ruins, hmm. but there was a temple. Okay. And that was the Vaishnav temple. So the matter is, uh, strictly speaking, over.